So guys, we're going to be reacting to the Splatoon 3 Nintendo Direct today. I'm so excited for Splatoon 3 to finally release in September. Just I hate having to wait like just under a month to this get it. This is Splatville in the heart of the Splatlands. Despite its old-fashioned appearance, it's seen enormous growth in recent years. It's also the hottest new place for inklings looking for I like to how the like big oh, Splatville is compared to Incopolis Square and Plaza. In the previous two games, just look how big it is. We're simply fascinated by what these inklings can do. They can splat ink in kit form and smoothly swim through it in swim form. We can see it's just going over the main mechanic of the game. Share some new findings on these inklings while providing summaries throughout. Of course, what goes for the inklings also applies to the octolings. We're sure of it. First, I hope, well, they show like emoting in battles. And I wonder if they'll act like I don't know if that's just for like just for this or if it will be added into the game or not the ink colors in that battle look quite good in my opinion When does that ever, that never happens because opponents are never just standing still. I mean, I wish they would and I could do a sneak attack, but it just never happens. This is quite good. And the squid roll. These will be quite good movement options, if you ask me. While it's glowing like this, the move also slightly repels ink from opponents. We've discovered where these turf war battles will take place. Stages confirmed for the Splatlands include... Gorge, Gorge. I like how different the stages are in Splatoon. I mean, this one kind of looks like it could be in Splatoon 2, but the other three... Like Eel Tower Alley looks like it could be in any three any of the three games. This one I feel like I'm gonna fall off a lot into the water. The stuff here looks fishy though. Several stages from Greater Angopolis also return. Well these stages are what I'm most excited for. Because I haven't played in some of these stages in like a year. Take special note of the rotating wall. Bridge. This one, this like, it's amazing. <laughs> like, it's the same, like, stage as one of the ones in Splatoon 1, but it's finished. Like, in Splatoon 1, it was under construction. This one I'm really looking forward to. So we'll get Flower of the Heights and Ancient Egypt later. Now, let's get into the inky essence of battles. Weapons. First, it appears that all the basic weapons for... See, if you have Splatoon 2 save data on your Switch, you can get three, like, three gold shells and licenses, and it'll go over that, like, soon. But basically, you can get any weapon regardless of level with them so you can just get whatever you want and the splatanas look amazing they look very fun
Like, imagine having a 1v1 of Splatanas. And they have a one-hit move. So they're going to be quite good. Let's dive into the weapons that can help you claim even more turrets. Special weapons. As the name implies, these are special kinds of weapons that can be unleashed after filling up the gauge from empty turrets. There are some new types we've identified, so let's take a closer look. Yeah, the specials in this game this look more balanced than Splatoon 1, but more broken like more like a lot better than the ones from Splatoon 2 They come in packs of 4 so take one and share the rest with your teammates I think that's a cool concept but we'll just have to wait to see how it does in the actual game This one looks quite good around the area It'll also mark an opponent's location and cause damage That's quite cool you can jump over it as well. So yeah, this is gonna be. This one is the best one. It's gonna be great in like Rainmaker or Splat Zones, where you can just go in. Like if a Rainmaker just make a path for the Rainmaker to follow. Odd. Why did they have to bring ten to missiles back? I think like twenty percent of people wanted them. I might be wrong, but I've seen a lot of people wishing that they weren't in the game. That's a pretty good weapon kit if you ask me. This one's not so much because I just don't really like sprinkler. Shop here to get your tentacles on some fresh weapons. This is Ammo Mask, owned by the chatty horseshoe crab Sheldon. Sheldon's back for a third game in a row. Wealth of weapon wisdom and sophisticated selections. Instead of using in-game currency for purchases, you'll yeah, need these Sheldon Sheldon licenses. licenses. Obtain them by leveling up through battles. Yeah, these are the normal ones, and for having Splatoon 2 save data, you get uh, the golden ones. One Sheldon license can be exchanged for one weapon that corresponds to your level. Oh, and just between us, if you exchange more Sheldon licenses than normal, it appears he'll give you a weapon you like That's than pretty as a cool. Reward. It's just, what if you use up all... I mean, I don't know what the max level is, but what if you use up all your Sheldon licenses on getting weapons that aren't your level yet? I want those glasses in real life. They're just so cool. Gear can be obtained in the shops around here. Each one is managed by an interesting shopkeeper. Let's drop in. This is not couture. A headgear shop. I like how every single headgear shop has had two like owners. Like Splatoon 1 we had Annie and Mo. Splatoon 2 we had Flo and Craymond, and, and now we have Gnarly, Eddie, and Nails. And yet again, a jellyfish is running from the clothing shop. At least his name's a bit different from Jalonzo and Jalfonzo. But this jellyfish has a keen eye for fashion sense. And finally, the Shoe Store Crush Station. Get a variety of cool kicks here, from trainers to sandals and even leather footwear. It's owned by Mr. Coco. He might look intimidating, but deep down, he's a nice guy. Probably. He's probably a nice guy. You're probably. You're welcome to pick out gear based on its appearance. But they do come with abilities yeah, that can help they've, you also, they've gotten rid of main power up, which in my opinion is good because we don't need we don't need gear abilities giving more damage to certain weapons and uh, bomb defense up DX has been replaced with sub resistance up, which is quite cool. Yeah, he grew up. 
to merch here, and you can add an ability of your choosing to your favorite gear. I think that's going to be great. You can change the main ability slots, which is quite cool. Couldn't do that in the other two games. And if you save your favorite gear combinations as fresh as six, this is, you this can is quite cool because I have a couple. Like with different weapons, I like to have different gear with different abilities, so this is going to be really helpful. Welcome to the lobby, a gathering spot for those seeking fresh battles. Turf war battles aren't the only thing Yeah, this is... the interior of the lobby is quite cool. And Anarchy Battles, if you have Splatoon 2 save data, you can just play Anarchy Battles straight from the beginning and you keep your rank, I'm pretty sure. And Rainmaker has checkpoints now. If you look here, it says we broke through the checkpoint. So, not too excited about Clan Blitz though. Don't really like Clan Blitz because you don't have the proper team communication to play it right. Unless you're playing League, and I can only get one of my friends to play League with me, so that's still two other teammates we can't communicate with. And playing ranked with friends is pretty cool. I'm excited for that. You can also recon in private battles now, which is quite cool. Definitely gonna check that out soon. This is cool how, like, the testing range is in the lobby now, instead of, like, it not being in the lobby. They brought the big dummies back from Splatoon 1, and, yeah, this is cool, you can do it while waiting, which what hasn't been done before. Also, if you look in the back there, it looks like it's another one of the targets. Which I think will throw enemy ink back so you can practice defensive maneuvers, which will be interesting. This is quite cool. It appears that you can also call out to friends in the lobby and invite them for battles. Why not see these for yourself? I like how you can guarantee a spot on your friend's team, which you use random. In the last two games, this is going to be good. I like the idea of battle replays. Fast forward, or skip to a certain part, or even swap to another player's view. Yeah, and you can swap to other people's view, which, which will help if like you think someone's hacking, and then you can like see if they are. We hope you'll use the it's uploading it's going to be quite cool. Next, we'll analyze and <laughs> yeah, this like a certain lockers. part of the community lockers. wanted apartments, but we got lockers, which we'll is good, I guess. One is yours, and the others belong to players with whom you recently played. Okay, you can customize them quite a bit, just, just for like being like a large weapons, rectangle. And items to your liking. Slap on some snazzy stickers and modify your locker's color. This is your space to express yourself. I don't think I'll, I don't know, like, I don't think they have any purpose other than looking cool. But I won't focus on the lockers. I'll probably just, like, if, if I happen to get anything, I'll just put it in. A general store on the edge of Splatsville. Apparently, the store manager vanishes quite often. So instead, yeah, the armament, the art, the artist is actually one of the people from the band Chirpy Chips from Splatoon One and Two, which is quite cool. Yeah, this game is just packed full of things to do and customize. They can be customized with a banner, badge. A lot more than I expected. Especially with it being on the same console as Splatoon 2, which doesn't have nearly enough stuff as this game. 
And this game isn't even out yet. Which will be available at Hot Lantern. By using points earned from battles, you can unlock various items, like stuff for splash tags and seasonal gear. I feel like the catalogs are just kind of like a free battle pass. New catalog is planned to be released every three months. I mean three months and get different gear in them. Everything you see in each catalog. There's still a lot of info to share, but I need to take a little breather here. In the meantime, please turn your attention towards this. Introducing Table Turf Battle! I'm not... I mean, at first I wasn't too bothered about this. But more, the more I've seen of it, it kind of looks interesting. I mean, I don't think I'll spend too much time doing it, but... There are cards like this, and even ones like this, and there are over 150 cards to collect in-game! So build your deck and send your rivals back. It looks interesting. Ish. So, imagine if there's an official tournament with this. And I wonder how you get more cards. Do you just get them from playing or That was Table Turf Battle, a 1v1 competitive card battle spin-off of Turf War. Seems like you get a certain amount of turns, which is cool, I guess. Be on the lookout for more details about Table Turf Battle in the future. And now this Summon Run is gonna be a lot better. Especially with being able to throw the eggs and get them in the basket instead of going all the way over there. I'm really hoping the map summoning summoned smoke yard isn't returning because I hate that map because if it's high tide, there's two fans which you can use to get across and that's it. And there's two halves. So it gets quite annoying quite fast. Yeah, there's a lot more boss salmonids. I mean, I've set the brought back fly fish because those are just annoying. The slime and the look, it's like it's kind of like the big bubbler special. Like, they've got quite a few bosses that are just like they're enemy versions of specials. This one's like the wave breaker because the shock wave. Yeah, look at it. It's just like the wave breaker. New boss salmon is confirmed. Make sure you're ready for an even more dangerous salmon run. It looks like it's cool that you can put the golden eggs into the big shots cannon. Hope we get some more information on who Mr. Grizz is. And yeah, there's this guy, I guess. I think there's going to be multiple because she said one of. So. I wonder what happens if you do actually kill it. Like. You get a special. This! I mean, I'm kind of glad that they're invading Wahoo World because it kind of sucks, but yeah. Big Run's gonna be quite cool. Although, it's probably gonna be like once every few months. Story mode looks even better than both games combined. Let's have to see if it's better than Octo Expansion because that was really good. This looks really cool. Hope we get some explanation on why the Octarians are hairy. 
Yeah, it seems like a little buddy is a sub weapon. So, I'm looking forward for more permanent special levels. Those look quite cool. And that looks like a boss. Because, like, in Ogro Expansion, you'd go in and go on a launch pad to the arena. I mean, that's kind of like Splatoon 2 Hero Mode as well, but it just gives vibes of a boss arena. We'd like to talk about other features that'll help you enjoy your splatting escapades even more in Splatoon 3. You can post illustrations here via this mailbox. Yeah, I'm not too bothered about this because in Splatoon in 2 you had to like so put on your connect to like a Facebook account. So illustrations will also be supported. Hopefully it's not like that this time. Additionally. You can grab food and drinks that'll help you in I wonder what the last two are, because there's like four little squid icons, so probably like give the effect to the whole team. And the shoals back. Photo mode's quite cool because in Splatoon 2 you had to use amiibo to take photos. Or display them in your locker. So this is cool. Like, instead of, like, just getting to recon the stages that are in rotation, you get to recon any stage for a whole hour instead of three or five minutes, depending on what mode the stage was on rotation in. This looks quite cool. I mean, hopefully this information isn't just locked to Splatnet 3. I wonder how this is going to work. They did this for Splatoon 2 as well, and I mean, so far we've only seen one, but the Splatoon 2 ones look a bit better. It's a shame that the Amiibo challenges aren't back, because the Splatoon 1 Amiibo challenges were amazing. But they didn't return in Splatoon 2, and I don't think they're returning in Splatoon 3. It seems you'll be able to get special gear and even snap photos together with Amiibo. And Splatoon 3 Amiibo. These look really cool. I definitely want to get these. Release is scheduled for this winter. This winter. So, if you guys think of getting them, now, let's talk about then you can get them for Christmas. As we mentioned a while ago, following the game's launch, a new in-game catalog will be released every three months for two years. New weapons will also be added around the same time as each catalog. In addition, X Battle, available after attaining... You don't know why they're bringing it, like, later, because it's in Splatoon 2, so can't they just bring it over. I mean, I'm not a game creator, so I don't know how games are made, but I'm assuming they could have just brought it over. This, the large scale paid DLC looks cool, but they say large scale, so that probably means large price as well, which hopefully it's a reasonable price. Like Octo Expansion was like £20. This <laughs> This is the greatest thing ever. Big man.
Big Man is the greatest thing on this oh, earth. Squid. I completely forgot to tell you about Deep Cut. They're an incredibly popular trio who host the Splatfield news program, Anarchy Splatcast. They provide information on battle stages, as well as other news bulletins. I guess it's cool how we get three, three of them instead of two. The youngsters of Splatville own sea cucumber foam. They can check the news while they're I'm pretty sure we can skip the news now, which is something that a lot of people wanted because having to, having to load up the game and watching the news every time. Oh, th this is this looks amazing. Can't wait for this. Just exploring like the area while it's night time is going to be like quite cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Splatfest returning. I mean, and di there's no way that we're going to not have them return. But hopefully we get to dance in the in there. Because everyone else gets to. And <laughs> three teams to choose from this time. So first half is going to be the same as every other Splatfest in the other game. And now we get this. <laughs> I think everyone wanted three teams at the same time. I'm not sure how it's gonna like work with, because the leading team gets four people, so they still get more inking power. <laughs> but we'll just have to wait and see. Like I can see the percentages at the top while you're playing. Seems like if you get the ultra signal, you get the sprinkler thing. how big man just says a <laughs> he just says a and then everyone knows what he's saying august 27th 9 a.m to 9 p.m that's all i'm doing that day i don't care i'm just doing splatoon 3 splatfest world premiere i'm just gonna be playing it all day and no one's gonna stop me. <laughs> and the theme is rock, paper, scissors. I mean, I always choose rock, so I'm gonna choose team rock.
Yeah, I'm going team team rock because I was almost gonna go team scissors because big man is on team scissors But that's a bit like you shouldn't pick a team just because your favorite person's on that team I mean big man's cool. He's just a giant manta ray But I'm choosing team rock because I always choose rock in rock paper scissors So that'll be it for today. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.